Hello, I'm Anna Maria Tremonti. You're listening to The Current. And people ask me this question all the time. Brother Muazzam, did the Americans ever let you pray? That is Moazem Beg. He is the founder of a group called Cage Prisoners and a former prisoner himself at the U.S. military prison in Guantanamo Bay, Cuba. There was a time when the Americans took me onto an airplane, the screams of the other prisoners and the roar of the engines and the shouts of the American soldiers screaming and cursing at us. With our hands tied behind our backs and our legs shackled with a hood over your head, and at this point, one of the brothers who was next to me, a Libyan, said, Ya akhi, dakhala waqta salah That the time for prayer has come, brother. Shall we pray? So that when brothers and sisters ever ask me, did the Americans ever let you pray, I say, there is no circumstance in which they could have ever stopped me from praying. Since his release from Guantanamo, Moazembeg has been a high-profile defender of the rights of others who have been imprisoned or detained in Guantanamo Bay or elsewhere. Among other things, he has worked with Amnesty International, one of the most widely respected human rights organizations in the world. But it is because of that association that Gita Segal decided she had to draw a line. She was the head of Amnesty International's gender unit until she was suspended from her post last week after she publicly questioned Amnesty's ongoing choice to work with Mr. Begg and cage prisoners. She argued that Moazem Begg and his organization promote extremist views and champion Islamic radicals, stands that are incompatible with the defense of universal human rights, and that, that Amnesty's reputation is tarnished by its association with him. Gita Segal is in London, England. Good morning. Good morning, Anna Maria. Uh, can you tell us then what is behind your suspension? Well, um, as you said, I was raising questions about uh, uh, Moazim Beg's uh, relationship with Amnesty International. And uh, I think what's interesting is that it's been 11 days since uh, the Sunday Times went public with uh, the concerns that I was raising. And in that time, Amnesty International has really acted as the public relations firm of Moazim Beg because it's insisted that he is a very important victim of um, violations uh, at Guantanamo, a, a, an issue that I absolutely never questioned. Um, it has not answered any of the questions that I asked. It said there's no evidence against him and that they only use him uh, to talk about uh, his experience as a victim and not his views. And the things that I would like to ask is, what do they think his views are and why does um, my boss, Claudio Cordone, think there's no evidence to justify cutting the link with him or now, even to having any form of public accountability, which is now being demanded? OK, so let's just clarify. Um, when Moazem Beg, um, what, you, you have spoken out in favor of Moazem Beg when he was a prisoner at Guantanamo Bay. He was tortured there. Uh, you, you had no problem with Amnesty International at that time working uh, in, in Mr. Begg's favor, am I correct? Absolutely. And th so what changed? What changed was that when he came out, and he is now uh, has his own organization with its own agenda, uh, Amnesty International associated itself very closely with him, and be uh, because he's a director of an organization, then with the organization as well. Um, uh, in... And, and in doing that, it, it gave him a global presence, um, which le would lead anybody who thinks he's respectable because they've seen him on an Amnesty International platform to be inclined to uh, go to the website of Cage Prisoners and uh, derive from there a series of views which are utterly incompatible with human rights. And so can you tell us what it is about um, Cage Prisoners that, um, that you disagree with? Well, as I've said already, I think they have a violent and discriminatory agenda that they're promoting people who promote extremely violent agendas. Uh, my main concern is that I'm extremely worried about the quality of research inside Amnesty International. If the interim secretary general, Claudio Cordone, who has been managing issues around research for many years in Amnesty International, cannot find any evidence that would suggest that amnesty should not be related to cage prisoners so closely.
And and can you give us some specific examples of the kinds of things that Cage Prisoners um, stands for that you feel are incompatible with what Amnesty International stands for? I think they're not simply a prisoner's rights organization. Um, they they promote a number of people who've been tried uh, in uh, open court. They're not simply promoting people who have been subjected to arbitrary detention and torture. Um, they promote the agendas and ideologies of those people. Um, but as I said, it's not so much what I think, because this is not, you know, a battle of a binary vision of the world. I'm trying to establish the process by which Amnesty International in the first place agreed uh, to this close relationship. And then when um, I made public my concerns, decided that they were going to make the relationship even stronger and uh, actively promote Mozambique. I think that was a huge mistake, and I think Claudio Cordone will live to regret that. And so this is you. But what you are what are you you are concerned about it is beyond the international politics of of this organization. There's a larger issue here, and I'm, I'd like you to sort of outline it for us. The larger issue, I think, is expressed by a petition that came out in my support, but also making the much broader point that the space for really um, unassailable human rights work and advocacy is shrinking in places in the world which are really dealing with both um, uh, government-led attacks in the war on terror and um, the use of human rights discourses in those attacks. And on the other hand, uh, extremely dubious organizations who are also using a human rights discourse. And they feel that a, that a global organization like Amnesty International should be able to distinguish between these. Because what's happening is that lawyers and activists and others who do support universal human rights, who are desperately trying to um, uh, you know, challenge arbitrary detention in their own courts in places like Bangladesh and Pakistan and India, um, you know, perfectly understand the difference between putting a writ of uh, habeas corpus, you know, trying to get somebody produced in court, ensure that that person has access to rights and so on, and championing them as a human rights defender. Now, Amnesty International has not necessarily called Mozambique a human rights defender, but the effect of what they've done is precisely to legitimize him as a human rights defender. And you're saying they've done this by, uh, by appearing with him and by appearing to um, support him with cage prisoners. They've affirmed their support for him several times since I made these concerns public. So and what, said there's no evidence against him. And and a, 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 what kind of relationship then d does Amnesty International have with Moaz and Beg and, and cage prisoners? Well, I was not involved with building that relationship. I advised very strongly against it on several occasions for several years, on, on many, many occasions at the level of the board of, of uh, Amnesty International USA, at the level of extremely senior people in the, uh, in the um, UK, in the British section of Amnesty, and had raised these issues internally. So, um, you know, I, I did not build that relationship, and I think that's a question that you should ask to my superiors. Okay, well, we do have someone waiting to talk to us about that, but I'm wondering then how important is the resolution of this issue to the long-term work of human rights, especially women's rights? I think at the moment we have absolutely no credibility across the world in being serious about treating the equality of women and the emancipation of women seriously. We have no credibility in t treating... Uh, the issue of r religious minorities, seriously. The people that Mr. Baig supports are very active in promoting attacks on, uh, for instance, ancient religions in Iraq, on Shia in Pakistan, uh, on all sorts of people who simply do not conform to their agendas. Uh, so I think we're in a very serious situation since the senior leadership have so fully endorsed Mr. Baig and tried to pretend that what they're doing is upholding the torture standard. That is not what they're doing. They're doing something dangerous, and I'm afraid that human rights advocates all over the world are calling for public accountability on this matter. Okay, and so this, just to clarify again, because these, uh, this is about jihadi views that actually speak against women, right? These are, these are views that actually talk about the oppression of women and the oppression mm -hmm. of other minorities. They talk about the oppression of everybody who does not conform to their particular view of the world.